Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome to USA Global TV and Radio. My name is Megan Sandwick. The show is called Intentional Productivity Tips, and we are going to be here every week on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern to talk about how you can take control of your productivity. I am so excited to be with you here today, and this is my very first show. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time today to talk about what does intentional productivity tips mean? Who am I? I call myself a strategic productivity partner. What is that? So we're going to get to know, you're going to get to know me in this show a little bit. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time. Today, our topic is taking control of productivity with our responsiveness. Are you ready to get started? Before I do that, I do want to let you know that this show is on available on YouTube. And so please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is USA Global TV and Radio and Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. Please subscribe to the channels, please like, and please turn on notifications because there will be a play tip playlist for finding everything intentional producti productivity tips related. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen right now. I'm gonna share a presentation with you um, that's gonna spend time today talking about, we've got our presentation. We are going to talk today about, like I said, taking control of your productivity with your responsiveness and get to know a little bit more about intentional productivity tips. Before we do that, I would like to introduce myself to you. So my name is Megan, as I mentioned, and I would like to tell you five things about me, five things that you can know to just get to know a little bit about who I am and what I'm about. The first thing, thing number one, is that practicing yoga, meditation, and Buddhist studies for the last 11 years has totally changed my body, mind, and spirit for the better. Literally, when I started doing yoga, I wasn't able to walk. I had a hip and ankle injury. And so yoga moved me into meditation and Buddhist studies, which truly has changed my life, how I work with people, my outlook, and especially my outlook on productivity. Another thing about me is I have loved day planners since college. I have always been a person that loved planners and gadgets. Um, I will say I miss my Franklin Covey from the early 90s. I'm going to age myself a little bit. But I will say, while I miss my day planner, I absolutely love the technical world and things that we're able to do with that. So part of what Intentional Productivity Tips is going to talk about is how we can use planners and the resources and tools we can use to help us to be more productive. Another thing about me, I am a huge fan of auto racing, especially NASCAR. On most Sundays and Saturdays, you will catch me watching a race. This week is going to be very stressful and exciting. So I'm a huge race of all things auto racing. I love, another thing about me is that I love the remote lifestyle. I love project-based work and I love the ability to wander work. For the last 10 years, I have been working remotely and I have been able to wander work. For example, last week, my sister and I spent a couple days in Calistoga, then we went to Walnut Creek in the Bay Area and I was able to work, wander and have fun. I love the remote lifestyle. So one of the things we're gonna talk about in our show is how to be a bit more productive with our remote lifestyle and how we can be more strategic with our remote lifestyle. Because as I love to say, wander work is what I love. The last thing about me, and you'll see a lot of pictures about this, but the beach in Sandy Feet with Sandy Feet is my happy place. I spent 12 years living in North San Diego County. I moved at the end of last year, at the end of 2023. And so I spent 12 years um, loving and being near the beach and having thousands of pictures. So you will see those, um, you will see those along the way. 
so that's just a little bit about me. I love the beach. I love doing yoga and spending time learning about Buddhist studies. On Sundays, you're going to find me sometimes, in, well, oftentimes watching car races. And again, wander work is something that I love. So I, over the last 10 years, have called myself a strategic productivity partner, an SPP. A lot of times people say to me, what is an SPP and how did that happen? I'm going to be honest with you. I became a strategic productivity partner, not necessarily on purpose, but because people kept hiring me to help them do things that became a strategic productivity partner. For example, my very, very first client years and years ago hired me because he needed an accountability partner to help him get organized and to be structured on a daily basis. So he and I worked together every day, making sure that his things were organized. Through working with him, I learned so much. And I realized that, you know what? We all need someone to help us be strategic. We all need someone to help us take control of our productivity. And with that, we need a partner, thus became a strategic productivity partner. So what I do with my clients when I work with them one-on-one -on -one with productivity is I help them. I'm a resource ninja. We figure out what tools, systems, or what do you need in this day and age to be able to help you get what you need done. I'm a project manager and I've helped a lot of my clients with fun, super interesting projects. And I've been a strategic planner. Over the last 11 years, when as I've grown into this role of becoming a strategic productivity partner, I've had the honor and the ability to work with people around the world to figure out how they could take control of their productivity, how they could get from where they were to where they wanted to be. I'll be honest with you, a lot of my clients are high achievers. They have higher expectations for themselves than I could ever place on them. What I've learned is that when it comes to productivity, we're all at one place and we need help getting to where we wanna go. So that's what I do. I'm a strategic productivity partner. And again, I've had the honor of working with people around the world and learning so very much. So what, now you know me and you know a little bit about a strategic productivity partner. Let's talk about what this show is going to be. Again, it's gonna be a weekly show. And what it's going to be is it's intentional productivity tips, right? So my goal every week is to come together to talk a little bit about how you can take control of productivity, how you can be intentional with productivity, how you can say, you know what, how can I make my productivity work for me so that I can enjoy the life that I've spent so much time creating? So I put together a mission for intentional productivity tips. The mission for this show is to discover practical productivity tips and solutions to take control of your time, to turn stress and overwhelm into achievement and fulfillment with intentional productivity tips. Oftentimes when I talk to my clients, when I talk to people about productivity, they always are starting from the place of being stressed and overwhelmed. More to do than time in the day, more to do than assets and resources. And my goal is say, no, let's turn it from overwhelm into achievement. So that's our mission. The vision of how we're going to do this is we're going to make the conversation about productivity more accessible, intentional, practical, and even fun for everyone. I think figuring out how to be more productive and how to embrace our lives should be a fun topic. It's something we should love and something we should want to talk about. So that's why this is called Intentional Productivity Tips. So that's the mission and the vision. What are we going to do? What's going to be on the show? So I will be honest with you. I've got some things that we're going to include, but I am always going to be flexible and adaptable. And if you ever have any ideas of, hey, let's talk about this, or I want to do that, I am totally open and flexible. We can adapt to anything that suggestions that come in. Me, this is an experience for all of us. But some of the things we're going to talk about each week, and this week included, we'll have a productivity quick tip, something quick and actionable that you can use today or this week. Because as I said, every week, my goal is you walk away with at least one nugget or tip that you didn't have before. There will be presentations. We've got some focus and themes. For example, the month of, so of September is going to be productivity basics. And we're going to talk for four weeks about four productivity basic areas, the core four that will help you to be more in control of your time. We'll have questions. We'll talk about lessons learned. There's going to be interviews with guests. Of course, we're going to talk about resources and we're going to talk about productivity mindset minute and even our intentional product, product, even our intentional 
processes. Have to be careful. Are we talking about productivity or processes? So that's what intentional productivity the show is going to be. Again, we will be here every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific on our YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe so you're able to see it and follow us. So we've talked a little bit about who I am and what the show is going to be. Why don't we get into talking about productivity and specifically today's topic that we want to talk about is taking control of your productivity with an intentional response. So when we talk about productivity, when you think about it, productivity is all of the things, right? A lot of times people will say to me, what all is included in productivity? It's, is it a to-do list? Yes. Is it a system or a process? Yes. Is productivity a tool or a gadget? When you think about it, productivity is all of those things. And so when you th one thing that's important for us, because there's so much involved, is how are we responding? What is the part that we play in how our productivity is able to play out throughout the given day or time? And so today we're going to talk about taking control of your productivity with an intentional response. To get started, I have an activity, and I'm going to ask for you to think of something for a second. I'm gonna ask you to do something. I'm gonna ask you to create an old fashioned Twitter post. I know it could be called many things right now, but I'm just saying an old fashioned Twitter post. I would like for you in your mind or to write it down. I would like for you to create a Twitter post. And this post about is, how would you describe the control you currently have over your productivity habits and time? How would you describe your productivity, the control you currently have? How would you describe the control you currently have over your productivity habits and times? Try in 140 characters if you are. I'm going to give you just a second to try and create that tweet. So what are some of the thoughts and words that you use to describe your control over your productivity? I recently asked a client to do this. I was meeting with a client for the first time and I asked her, I said, how would you describe, if you, she was fortunate, she was in social media, so it was easy for her. I said, how would you describe the control you have in your relationship with productivity? And her response was, it sucks. It's like, hmm, okay, well, that's one way to describe it. But what would you describe how you want your relationship to be? When you think about the reason I'm asking you to, to identify and put the words together with the control in your mindset around your productivity habits and time is because that's our starting place, right? If we're going to be intentional with our productivity, we need to know where we're starting. So if the words we're using is it sucks, or maybe I'm overwhelmed, or maybe I don't know where to get started every day or I have more meetings than I ever could imagine and finish in one day, or my email is a hellhole. Again, all things that I've heard from my clients when we talked about how would you describe your productivity. When we think about it, if those are the words we're using to describe our productivity, what is our mindset going to be? What is our actions going to be? Because I would say when you think about it, those words aren't necessarily the most positive, are they? When we think about productivity, let's talk about where are we gonna get started? How are we gonna start with being intentional with our productivity? So what we wanna think about is we're gonna move from a space of I don't know where I am, or again, some of those words, like where am I, where are we right now with our productivity? I don't know. To where we wanna go is we want to believe that we can do it, right? We wanna go from where we are to we want to go to where we can be, right? Where we are is great because that's where we are, but that's not necessarily where we want to stay, especially with productivity. So what we want to look at is where can we be? So now that we kind of have an idea of where we are with our tweet that we created, let's talk a little bit about intentional productivity and intentional planning. When a lot of times people will say to me, well, how do I do that? Again, where do we get started, right? I know where I am. I know where I want to go. How am I going to get there? Remember the topic of this conversation and today is taking control of our response. So what I want to do is talk a little bit about productivity in our response and how our response can directly impact our outcome. 
To do this, I'm going to talk about a formula that I learned years ago. It was actually at a speech that Jack Canfield gave a very long time ago um, in Fresno. It was he was giving a speech. It was when um, the uh, the Chicken Soup for the Soul books were very popular. And so at the speech, it was super, very valuable to me. One of the things that he gave to me in that speech, I've actually used since then. And it is the thought, the equation of event plus response equals our outcome. So the event and our response to it will directly impact the outcome. So for example, if we have the event of I'm swamped, this is insane and not realistic and there's not enough time. If that's the event, right? I'm swamped, I have too much to do with my productivity. If that's the event, if my response is, this is hopeless, it's impossible, I'm just gonna do what I can do. I, I just can't. So if we have a re event of being, of being swamped and a responsiveness of feeling hopeless, what is our outcome gonna be? A feeling of defeat, right? I'm not in control, I'll take what I can get. So when you think about it, the response and how we respond to the event of our productivity is directly gonna impact the outcome. We know we can have a negative response, but what if we changed it? What if we looked at it and said, again, I'm swamped. I'm gonna take a minute to set some realistic expectations, right? So the event is I'm swamped. If the response is, let's think about this strategically. What are the actions I can take to make the most impact and what are my resources available? So if the response isn't the freaked out, but if the response is, let's think about this, let's stop and let's think strategically how we can deal with being swamped. The outcome of course is, okay, I've got this. It will not be easy, but I have a plan and I will work for what I want. When you think about it, our response directly is going to impact the outcome and what we receive with our mindset, our actions, and whatever happens in our life, right? So when it comes to productivity and getting things done, if we're stress responding, we're not going to have the outcome we want. So as I've talked with clients about this before, and we talk about the responsiveness, they're always like, yeah, but what do I do? How do I do that? You know, what does that look like? How do I take control of my responsiveness? So I'm gonna, we're gonna talk today about four tips to take control of your response. And I'm gonna say it's worth the intentional effort. Now, what you're gonna see down here over on the side with this picture is um, a beach, of course, uh, one of my favorite beaches. Um, but anyways, this is an image that's based on the Franklin, Franklin Covey triquation, right? So this is a triquation of productivity. What it talks about is if we were to have a triangle, if at the bottom corner it said event control, at the top it said focus productivity, and at the other corner it said self-belief. When you think about it, event control, focus productivity, and self-belief are all intertwined. They can either spiral to the positive or they can spiral to the negative. If we're not in control of the event, and I don't mean control freak control of the event, but if we don't know what's going on or if we don't have an expectation, if we're not in control of the event, we're not going to be able to start in a productive, positive way. If we don't have focused productivity, we're not going to be able to get things done. And if we don't have self-belief, if we can't picture ourselves getting things done, that's not going to happen. So let's look at four tips to take control of your response. The first tip is motivation. So when we think about motivation, one of the things that can be scary is the start, right? What if I fall? Whenever talking with people, whenever they're starting something new or they're working through challenges, there can be that fear of what if I fall? And the answer is, oh, but darling, what if you fly? When you think about it, when it comes to productivity, we want to take the opportunity to get to where we wanna be. We wanna look at what's in our way and we wanna remove it. Okay, we're gonna look at the four tips, but before that, I want to note to ourselves, when it comes to fixing things, before we jump into fix it mode, we need to believe in ourselves and our power. We are badasses and we need to remember that. And so when we, it is something that is important for us to remember as we get started with productivity. So let's look at the four tips. The first tip, motion. So again, if the event is productivity, we have a lot to get done. 
if our response, if we think about it with what is our motivation, what does that mean? What I mean by the motivation is when it comes to productivity and our responses, it's essential that remember it's all about you. You get to be 100% selfish. So when it comes to your response and how you're motivated to be productive, you get to be selfish. I had one client that was like, Megan, I don't want to see red on the screen. Great. What color do you want to see? When you think about it, we get to be selfish. If there's something we don't like or we don't feel right, then toss it out and find what does. We don't have to judge it, which is number two. We don't need to judge ourselves. If we like it, we like it, do it. If it works, keep doing it. If it doesn't, then don't. The third thing is when it comes to our motivation, it's important that we begin with an end in mind, right? When we think about it. So if the event is I'm overwhelmed, I have an event that I have to, I have a project that I have to finish tomorrow and I am overwhelmed, right? In that situation, when it looks bigger than we can handle, what we need to remember is begin with the end in mind and identify the one thing you can do right now that will help to move forward. Don't think of the big pile. Think of one thing you can do right now. Finish one thing, then the next thing. Break it down into small bite-sized pieces. A quote I've always heard is, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And that's a reminder when we come to productivity. Begin with the end in mind. Find that one thing you can do right now that will help and then continue doing that. Also, when the event is productivity, we have a lot that we need to get done. We have a project to do. Remember the why. Remember our why. Because when we remember why we're doing it and how this connects to us, it's going to increase our motivation. The next tip is our response of our mindset, right? So if we think of our response, again, project due tomorrow, what is our response? If we look at our mindset, if we come to our book and be honest about our mindset, it's going to make a difference for our response. When it comes to productivity, it is time to stop lying with ourselves. We have to be honest with our time and our priorities. A lot of times when I work with clients, they'll come up with a list of a hundred things that they're working on right now. And it's not things that they need to be working on. So when it comes to productivity, we need to stop lying to ourselves. It's not, that phone call is not going to take five minutes. That phone call might take 30 minutes. When we think about it, there's things we do. Oh, I'll write that email in, in 10 minutes. No, it's going to take an hour. When you think about it, we have to be honest with our time and our priorities. Sometimes there's things I want to do. Do I want to create social media posts? Absolutely. But is my report to tomorrow? Absolutely. So I need to work on my report and not my social media posts. Our mindset and being realistic is important. We have to be intentional to set realistic expectations. Looking at the current panoramic, you have to view your priorities and available time. When we talk about how we respond to events when it comes to productivity, we must be in realistic with our expectations. Another thing really truly is what is playing in your mental playlist? What are the tunes that you're hearing? It could be a song, but what are the kinds of things that you're hearing in your mental playlist? Sometimes that can also impact our mindset and create a negative outcome. So we want to be sure to be aware of, am I thinking positive? What words am I saying to myself? What tones am I saying to myself? I know anytime I hear and people remind me, do you talk to yourself the way you talk to your friends? Oh, something I'm working on. But our mental playlist is important. We need to be willing and prepared to adjust our time, actions, and expectations. There are times when things are going to change and we cannot, we can, it's just the way that it is. So when it comes to our responsiveness, again, product, project report done due tomorrow, our response is if the electricity, you know, if something happens, we might, might need to adjust and we might, might need to um, be realistic with our actions and our mindset. And then when it comes to mindset, it's also important in our response to productivity, we must trust the process. It's so important to trust what we're doing. Okay, so we've talked about two of the responses that are going to help, two of the two responses that are going to help when it comes to productivity. We have talked about our motivation. We've talked about our mindset. Now let's talk about our tools and our resources. Our tools and resources are hugely valuable when it comes to what we're working on and how we're going to respond. When you think about it, our tools and resources can be people, it could be things, it could be information. And so sometimes when we've got a situation, okay, I have a product, again, report, need to finish it tomorrow. 
I'm having an issue. I'm having an issue formatting it. I know that for me, formatting things can stress me out. What am I going to do? So some of my responses, this is when maybe I need to call for a lifeline. Is there a call for, I call my AT, my angels. Is there, can I call an angel? Can I phone a friend? Sometimes when we're being, when we are blocked, when it comes to productivity, our response needs to be, Hey, I need to get some help from outside. Maybe I need to reach out to a mentor or a former coworker. Maybe I need to connect with like-minded people, maybe on a social, maybe on LinkedIn. You see people that will say, Hey, can you do this? Hey, can you help me? When you think about it, when it comes to that response and when it comes to, again, I'm stuck, I need help. What are the tools and resources that can help? Who is it that can help? Remind yourself of the lessons that you've learned in past experiences. If you made it through those things in the past, you can do this. Another thing is research, research, research. We have so many, we have the world at the palm of our hands, literally right now with, when you think about it with our phones. So use that time when we're blocked, when we need to think about how we want to change our response to have a positive outcome, research, look for information. And then ask yourself, do I have the tools and assets I need? We talked a little bit before about the four core that core four that we're going to look at in September. We're actually going to do a resource review to make sure you've got the right tools and resources so that when it comes to that response, you're able to have a positive outcome and not one of being frustrated and irritated. The fourth response that we're going to talk about is what is your action and your execution? How are you going to take action and execute on whatever the event is? What is that response going to be? When it comes to this, it's so important to drop expectations, attachments to expectations. So we can't be attached to an expectation and say, it worked like this always. We need to look at that for right now. Can't have any attachments. Another thing, create a daily productivity checklist. If we have a daily productivity checklist, it's gonna help us to know and take control of our productivity because we'll know what we're doing and where we are. Hang around because we're gonna talk about a tip for that a little bit later. Be intentional to schedule time for project blocks. Be intentional to know who you are. For example, I, am, I used to not be a morning person working with people productivity. I am good at having client calls in the mornings. But when it comes to being creative or getting things done, I'm more of an evening person. And so one of the things I've had to learn is when am I going to be the most productive and get things done? When am I going to get it done the fastest? And so getting to know yourself and your will help with when you're going to execute and when you're going to take action. Again, if you know you're not a morning person to be able to get up the morning on thing, do not say, oh, I'll get up tomorrow morning and do it because you know you're not going to. Be realistic with when you're going to take action. And then it's all about Again, with the action, one thing you can do is have an accountability partner, someone that you talk to and point things out. When we think about it, equipping our response is going to be how we're able to change the outcome when it comes to being productive. productive. When it comes from being from stressed to changing that, to wanting to be in control and to have organized and clear priorities, and also to be able to enjoy the life that you've, you've created. Again, how do we equip our response? Here are four tools that we have talked about. Motivation, your mindset, the tools and resources you're using, and the action and execution. How does this change? So again, when we move from, I am swamped, this is insane and not realistic, there's not enough time. When we think of the response of what is our motivation and our mindset? Do I have the tools I need? Is there someone I can call? Wait a minute, why am I having such negative thoughts? When we change that response, our outcome is gonna be, it's your choice. What do you need to do to get, what do you need to do to get done and how do you want to do it? So when we change the response to looking at our motivation and our mindset and the tools and resources and action and, action and execution, we're going to get done what we need to do how we want it. When it comes to intentional productivity tip reminder, we cannot always control the event, but we can control our response. Again, instead of saying, I'm swamped, we're gonna say again, I'm gonna take time. I'm gonna take a minute and set realistic expectations. No matter the event, you get to choose your response that will impact your outcome. 
So the goal of today's conversation has been to say, what are some responses and what are some tips and tools we can use to improve that response so we have the outcome we want? At the beginning, I asked you to create a post, a tweet, to talk about how you describe your relationship with productivity tips and habits. Now, as we've thought about those four tips and tools and we've talked about it, take a second to update your post. How will you now describe the intentional actions you will take to increase control of your productivity now? Again, I recently asked a client and I said to a client who I've worked with for about a year and a half, I said, how would he describe the work we've done together and him being intentional? And he said, my productivity no longer stresses me out. I know what I'm doing and I know that I'm doing the right things. So to me, that is one of the goals with productivity. And that's why we want to be intentional with our productivity. And so that's why each week we want to take control of our productivity. And we're going to do that together because taking control of our productivity is going to help our responses, responsiveness. It is time to enjoy the life you've created. It is time to reduce productivity stress. And it's time to have fun getting stuff done. I like GSD, the word. Sometimes I use stuff, sometimes I use another word. Let's continue how to ex explore how to be intentional with our productivity together. Last thing I'm going to tell you, as I mentioned each week, I'm going to have a productivity tip for you. So this week's productivity is take control of time, of your time by adding time estimate to your tasks. What do I mean by that? So when you've got a task list, I would say right next to it, write down a time estimate, how long it will take because this is gonna help you on a daily basis, right? What you're gonna do on a daily basis is you're gonna look at your calendar and you're gonna see how many hours of meetings you have and how many hours of work you have. And if you have scheduled, let's say you have six hours of meetings, you have two hours of work that you're able to do and you look at the task list, if you have scheduled four hours of work or six hours of work in that day, you're not gonna get it done right? You're not setting a realistic expectation. So this week's productivity tip is set realistic time expectations for your day. So what I say to that is add an estimate next to each task you've written down. And I say do it high level, 15 minutes or less, 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, four hours in a day, right? Those are kind of the blocks that I use. And then you'll see when I write down my task, then I write down my time. And then I'm able to calculate how much time of work I've tried to put into the day. Set realistic expectations for your day, your time. Set realistic, ex set realistic time expectations for your day. That's a mouthful for some reason for me. Sorry about that. But what that tip is going to do is it's going to help you to see, am I trying to cram seven hours of work into 60 minute block? You know if you're going into that 60 minute block and you have seven hours of work, what is your event is seven hours of work, 60 minutes able to do it. If your response is, well, I'll just get started, we know that the outcome isn't going to be positive. So it's important to take control of your time and your day by setting task expectations, time aspects, expectations. So we have talked about a lot today and I have had such a great time with you. Today, our goal has been to talk a little bit about intentional productivity tips and what we're going to be doing on a weekly basis. It's also been to talk about how we can take control of our responsiveness with four tips so that our outcome when it comes to productivity is not stressful, that it's one of we're taking control of the time and what we're doing. Again, my name is Megan Sandwick. This is Intentional Productivity Tips. I will be on uh, every Wednesday, you can find me on USA Global TV and Radio. You can find me on that every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, or you can like and then subscribe, be notified when the show is on, and I will be located in the um, Intentional Productivity Tips playlist. I do hope you enjoy. Please give me feedback. If you want to, if you want to reach me. You can, again, find me there on YouTube. You can also find my, on, uh, find my website, indelible.global. And you can find me on Instagram at Intentional Productivity Tips. As I mentioned, my name is Megan. I am so excited to be back with you. Please, please do remember to watch on USA Global TV and radio, like, and then subscribe. 
Now we're going to have a word from our sponsors. <laughs> 